What up, what up, that's number history water. Welcome back, guys. Here's your boy Sean. Hey you girl Mel. Yes, yes, yes. Hello, welcome SM Squad. How are you guys doing today? We hope you guys are absolutely amazing. Yes, guys, if you're having a rough day, let's turn it around right now with some good energy and some good content, all right? All right. Some lovely, right? What we got today, babe? Okay, babe, today we'll be reacting to Shame on You, Michael Orr. Uh-oh. This is Candace Owens. Candace Owens. Going in on Michael Orr? All right. And Shame I think this is the ex-Ravens player. The football player, right? Football player. Yeah. Yes. Um, I would love to hear what she got to say. And so would I. All right. So, guys, before we get into it, make sure you like, comment, subscribe to the channel, and also turn on your post notification bell so you guys can notified. Let's get into it, my love. Go. Here we go. Good energy, good content. Here we go. She's going in. You know, there are some movies that really just pull at your heartstrings. I can tell you one of my favorite movies of all times. So it better never get ruined. Remember the Titans. I just love Remember the Titans. Everywhere we go. And it, I think it's probably because it is one of those things that accurately examines how far America has come without, you know, saying that things are perfect, but realizing that we've come a very long way in terms of race. Yeah. Another one of those movies that made you feel really good, and not necessarily because it was about a racial struggle, but because it was about racial harmony, really, was The Blind Side. You yeah. guys know the story, and in case you don't, I'm going to tell you. Michael Orr met the Tuies, a family in Tennessee, back in 2004 while he was attending the Briarcrest Christian School in Eads, Tennessee, where he excelled at football and he played in the Tennessee All-State game. Mm. But he came from a troubled home and his mother was a drug addict, and amid his father's death, he was penniless and would often stay at the home of his classmates until... He connected with a couple named Sean and Leanne Tui in the summer of his senior year. Yeah. Now, based on clips of him, he said they made him feel like he was a part of the family. And eventually they made the decision not to adopt him, but to place him within a conservatorship. And the reason for that was because, well, he was 18 years old and adoption was not an option. Just to jog your memory a little more, okay. take a look at this clip. My background is you no know, bad background. And you know, people said, a lot of people said I couldn't do it. You can do anything you put your mind to. It. And after the success of The Blind Side, the Tuies now want to tell their version of the story and help others give back. In their new book, they say if there is one meaning we'd like you to take from our story, it's this. The person you just walked past is the one who could change your life. So every once in a while, stop and turn around. Ah, uh, butterflies. Honestly, yeah. even looking at that clip, it makes me so happy. And it's for a lot of reasons. Like I said, this wasn't exactly a tale of racial duress. It was just about harmony. And I think for a lot of people, you attach yourselves to a story like that. If you're in a circumstance where you can help people, you look at the Tuies and you say, wow, they had such a huge impact on this young man's life just because they took a second to care about him. Mm. I think that's the reason the movie was so successful, The Blind Side, aside from the fact that it had yeah. Sandra Bullock in it and she's an amazing actress and played Leanne Tui in a way that was so powerful that it earned her an Oscar. Uh, it was just also that emotional storytelling and making people want to aspire to more in their lives. Now, I remember watching this movie. It earned $300 million at the box office, wow. by the way. And it made me think about my childhood because throughout my entire life, there have always been people that have helped me. And I'm not saying this to in any way denigrate my own family. We always had food on the table, but, you know, I had two very busy working parents. My mother never really cooked. And there was this family that lived down the road for me who did so much for me. Was young, probably, I would say, very middle class Irish family. I'd go there every morning, have breakfast. The mom would take me to school. She'd pick me up from school. She'd take me back home. And so I think that might have been part of the reason why I attached to the story so much. I just thought, you know, you, you never okay. know who's going to help you. And when you don't have to think of it or... Or, or cast it in the light of racial issues and tensions. It's just a feel-good American story. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as we know, we cannot have nice things in America anymore. We were all blindsided to learn that Michael Orr is taking the Tuies to court. Yes, he has filed a lawsuit. Hold on. Is he serious? Hold on now. I was on track all the way up to when she said that. Hold He's on. taking these amazing God sent people. No way. To court after all they've done for him. Maybe she read that wrong. Hold on, guys. I'm just ashamed. Uh oh. To think of it or 
or, or cast it in the light of racial issues and tensions. It's just a feel-good American story. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as we know, we cannot have nice things in America anymore. We were all blindsided to learn that Michael Orr is taking the Tuies to court. Yes, he has filed a lawsuit claiming that Sean and Leanne Tuie tricked him into making them his conservators rather than his adoptive parents nearly two decades ago. So he is making these claims two decades after the fact. Now, the Tuies have come out and denied that they kept the conservatorship a secret from Orr. They say that they are positively devastated by the allegations. And a part of his allegations is that they profited handsomely from his story. And they are now claiming through their lawyer that he demanded a $15 million payment from them and threatened to go to the public according to TMZ. Now, so you can imagine this going on in the background for a couple of years. He's making demands, give me $15 million. They don't give him the $15 million. And now he's taking this to the public. He's filing a lawsuit and he's saying that he's sad, but obviously he was taken advantage of. I mean, this, this movie made $300 million and he says that he didn't make that much money actually, that he only, he didn't make any money whatsoever, despite all the success of the film. So again, just to sort of recap why they didn't adopt him, it is because he was 18 years old. So in order to make him a part of their family, they needed to enter within a conservatorship contract, which would have allowed him to, allowed the Tui family to make legal decisions for him. Again, his mother was a drug addict. His father was dead. And so in order for them to step in as parents, being able to sign contracts on his behalf, being able to sign contracts for him to go to school, they needed to enter into this conservatorship. This is not like the Britney Spears type conservatorship by any means. But he's kind of looking at this backwards and saying that something was wrong, even though in his own book, he acknowledged that they sat him down and explained to him why they were entering in this conservatorship. Somehow he's rinsed that from his memory and he feels that he was duped. So, of course, in order to examine this and to look at it with clear eyes, we should have an understanding of how much money the Tuies actually made from the blind side, since this seems to be some sort of a financial dispute. It turns out, according to legal filings, that the Tuies, along with both of their two birth children, each made $225,000 off of the blind side, plus 2.5% of the defined net proceeds. Now, Ora is claiming that he did not see a single red cent from the movie, but Sean Tui Jr. is saying that even for him, he's frustrated because he only received $60,000 to $70,000 in royalties over the years. Not a lot of money. The Tuies are saying that they placed his money in the conservatorship. He just hasn't touched it. He has decided not to touch that money for whatever reason, likely because he's earning a lot more, or he earned a lot more as a pro NFL football player. He earned millions. He signed, I think, a $20 million contract with the Baltimore Ravens. So the $100,000 or $200,000 that we're seeing his conservatorship was not something that necessarily concerned him. But then there's this. This is when you just start to inject common sense, right? We're talking about, at most, $225,000. Maybe it's $60,000. Maybe it's $70,000. The Tui family's wealth, the father earned $200 million by selling his conglomerate of fast food restaurants. So in order to believe Michael Orr's version of events, you would have to think that despite them having tremendous wealth themselves, despite the family selling the fast food conglomerate and and its franchises for more than $200 million, that they conspired to meet with this athlete who they had no idea was going to make it to the NFL, who they had no idea if they wrote a book about it was going to be picked up and turned into a movie, all so that they could steal a couple of a hundred thousand extra dollars from him, which are conveniently sitting into his conservatorship. Obviously, that's foolish. That's that's an incredibly foolish belief. What they did, they did out of their hearts. There's no question about that. Placing him in a conservatorship picking him up from his mother's house as was displayed, you know, allowing him to live in their house, taking him to practice, making sure that he made it there, making sure that he got into a good school, signing all the contracts. They did not do this for money. They did this because they were just good people who cared about him and loved him as though he was their own son. And now, 20 years down the line, he's turning their back on them. Why? Well, as I said, I have an inside scoop as to what happened here. It's the same thing that happens He's all the time. He's turning his back on them. Black Lives Matter has rotted people's brains. That's what happened. Well, I'm 
I tell you, this is not going to happen. He got out of the NFL. Wow. He's seeing the media. He's seeing black versus white. Now people can't even see their friends the same way. You know these stories. People that were friends yeah. for decades, best friends growing up. Now they no longer talk. They no longer talk because suddenly their black friend woke up wow. one day and realized that their friend for decades was actually a racist the entire time because the media told them so or because they had wow. the wrong perspective on the George Floyd shooting. This has been the media brainwash and the simulation that America has been existing under, and it's actually causing us to go backwards as a society. And in this particular circumstance, yeah. Michael Orr quite literally went backwards in his own mind, reflected on things that were beautiful in his life, and he turned those events into things that were villainous, right? He turned the two E's, a family that did something out of the goodness of their heart, yeah. into villains. And I will tell you that he likely had an entire cast of characters around him that supported yeah. it. It Most says definitely. that he was married very recently, I think last year, a woman that he was with for a very long time. But I will tell you that just being somebody that is married, you know that these decisions aren't made with just one person. He probably had his wife's full support. He's probably got friends that said to him, oh, yeah, no, for sure. They did you wrong. You're in a conservatorship like Britney Spears. Oh, for sure. That money made 300 million. You're telling me you didn't make any money. They used you, man. Those white people just used you. And eventually it just started to make sense to him. He, he couldn't actually examine his life and the beautiful blessings that he received. And rather, yeah. he is destroying one of the most crucial relationships that he's ever built up in his life. They a relationship that yeah. brought him every single thing that he has today, aside from his remarkable talent. But of course, talent will only get you so far. Well, you obviously definitely. need to be organized. He would have had to apply to school. He probably would have never even applied to school yeah. had it not been for the two E's and all of their help with having a mother as a drug wow. addict. But he can't see any of those blessings because... Black Lives Matter has rotted his brain. And so unfortunately, this feel-good American story that brought us all closer is now being tainted by a lawsuit in which he's not going to win. I mean, he will win in the form of the two he's already saying, we are happy to acquiesce to you leaving the conservatorship. We are certainly not trying to control you or any of your decisions. Go, take it. They have filed. They want the conservatorship gone. And I'm sure that they also want him gone. I don't Because what a them. horrible thing to do to somebody that cares about you. What a horrible thing to do to a couple oh, that loved you for no reason other than the fact that they felt a connection to you and they wanted to help you. That's where we're at right. in America, guys. It's pretty depressing, but shame on him. He should drop this legal filing immediately and apologize Absolutely. to the family for everything that he's done, including trying to hustle them for $15 million before he went public with this lawsuit. Shame on you, Michael Orr. All right, if you like this video, you're going to like the full episode even wow. better. You can find it by clicking right here. Wow. Are you serious, Michael wow. Orr? I am really... Got the conservative shit and you still crying about... I am so upset about this because it's, I've been I'm... in a situation like this where the parent is on drugs and we take the kids in and then we become the bad people. And it's really hurtful and unfortunate, very disappointing because the people you help the most, they will be the ones who turn on you without a doubt, especially when they get into a situation this where so they're in need. Now he's surrounded. I mean, if it wasn't, if it weren't for the twoies, this man this wouldn't have gone so anywhere near as far as he sad. has gone in life. I just want to say, um, shout out to Candace Owens. She did yes. an amazing job with covering the story, story most definitely. putting it out there so people can see it. Yes. And um, also, shout out to Tui's. The Tui's, you guys. Amazing family. Wow. That We're took such this, a God sent you a this grown man in because he was 18. Yep. Okay. Took him in, fed him, clothed him, gave him somewhere to stay. And um, from that, he, you know, pursued his career in football and, and did well with the Ravens. Mm -hmm. But now that the money dried up, mm. Mm, now I want to go back to the main source, not for help, but to try to take and try to, you try know, to sue these people, these people out of money. The Tuies didn't need his money. They didn't. They had restaurants, as we saw in the movie. Say they had 300 million. They had franchises, so... They didn't need his So they money. basically made more than probably what he made in in his football career. Oh so my goodness. So I don't understand the low blow to come back and to bite the hand that fed you for all of those years. Shame when your mother you. was getting high or, you know, doing something other than taking care of you. That's how it goes. I, bet he's, the, I bet he's not, you know, trying to go at his yeah, birth mom. Why, why not go with her? You I know bet what I'm saying? he's not. 
Why didn't you take care of me, mom? Why why didn't you do these things like these good people did for me? Right. These and amazing then, people took you in. Where is the appreciation? Where is the gratitude? Where is the, you know, thank you? You know what I'm saying? And it's crazy because and then you got the Black Lives Angry. Matter, right? With all this brainwashing, the media, the black and white thing that, you know, was just really made up and just thrown out there for people to, you know, bite on. And it's it's just, it's sad. Yeah. It really is sad for a man mm. to do these such acts. It's horrible. Shame on you. My heart is broken. Good people. I can't believe that. Good people. This movie is one of my favorite movies, The Blind Side. Yes. I mean, it truly warmed my heart. It made me feel like you know, there are good people out there. It doesn't yes. matter your skin color. And, then and for him think, to take something so good and trash it. Oh. I mean, he he was a big guy. So I'm not nine times out of ten. He's eating more than everyone in the house. So, exactly. you know, I'm I gotta feed you twice. Opposed to a grown once, man. You know what I'm saying? A grown man, eighteen, and you wait yeah. twenty years to come back. You got the, you know, conservatorship or, you know, you, you had that. That's yours. Yeah. That's it. That's what you came with. And I agree with Candace. I mean, he's newly married. Of course, his wife Someone was is in his, his ear, ear, right? She wants more money. Why he's probably he broke think, right yeah, now. He's probably close down to it. So to instead of going to his family, which are the Tuies, yep. you know, asking his mom right, well. and dad for help, he's going to try to, you know, to backstab them, rob, you know, you know take them, take them, you know, to take them down publicly, and he's going to lose. Shame on you. He's going to lose, and mm -hmm. you know when they when they get them big contracts in the NFL, they get taxed automatically, like in half, like so much taxes, state, you know. He probably didn't invest federal. any of that money. They just hitting it up. Yeah. Yeah, he probably. And now it's sucked dry. Yeah. And now you want to go back to the main source that really put you on the mat, that fed you, you know, made sure you got the practice, probably, you know, sent you to college or whatever. It's yeah. sad, man. Yes, um, it is. But shout out to Candace Owens for covering this she story. She did an amazing, amazing job. I couldn't agree more with Candace. Yes, I got to agree with and her. And it's really sad and unfortunate. And this is a lesson for us all. We have to be very careful. Even though we do it out of the kindness of our hearts, but some of these people that we help, you know, they're just going to turn yeah. back around and try to stab us in our back. So wow. we got to be, we have to be Take careful big who we help. Man in and feed him. And I watched the movie two, three times. Oh, we it saw like, it. It was so heartfelt yeah. for this amazing family with children in their own, you know, life to bring him in. But you know what? Even on the movie, he seemed a little like slow. Like he was low off. Like, yeah. Yeah, he seemed a little, um, I don't want to say Mike. it too harshly, but he seemed like he was slightly autistic. Mm -hmm. So, you know, big guy. maybe that's, you know, what the yeah. problem is. Wow, know. guys. Um, go ahead and smash that like button, give this video a big fat thumbs up, and also get inside the comment section. We love to cover Candace Owens. Yeah, all right, guys? So make sure you go ahead and fill up the comment section for us. We appreciate the love, all right? That's our time. We're signing off. Here's your boy, Sean. And your girl. Mel. Mel. <laughs> your girl, Mel. All right, guys. We, we hope you guys. enjoyed this video. Have an amazing Absolutely. day on purpose. On purpose. Peace.